Chapter 42 The sky around Minley was quiet as she walked on the red rope bridge. The only sounds she heard were those of her own breathing and the pounding of her heart in her chest. After the dragon and land had faded from view, Minley saw nothing except for the night around her. With such a limitless landscape, she could not tell how far she had walked or how much of the bridge she had left. It seemed never-ending. She began to wonder if she had walked for hours or days. But slowly, so slowly Minley almost didn't notice it, the darkness of the night lessened. With each step she took, the world around her became brighter. And with this light, Minley saw that the sky below her had somehow became a vast lake of pure water and the night clouds were made of floating lilies. And stretched before her in the distance, like a faraway coast, she saw a high wall that seemed to glow. The wall was smooth and creamy white, as if made out of pearl. It too seemed to be endless. Minley could not see where it began or ended. However, as Minley got closer, she saw a round opening in the wall just before her. And in that circular passageway, a white rabbit stood like a jade statue. It was only when Minley stepped off the bridge and the rabbit started toward her that Minley realized it was alive. Welcome, the rabbit said. You're a little late. Did you have trouble with the monkeys? Minley was too astonished to speak. The rabbit looked extremely like the one painted on her blue rice bowl. She nodded with her mouth gaping. Well, let's go, the rabbit said. You're going to have to keep it short with the old man. He's very busy and he hates unnecessary talk. Minley followed the rabbit through the round opening into a white courtyard and over a polished stone bridge that seemed to grow from the ground. As they passed over it, Minley saw the smooth water wave with gentle ripples and heard what sounded like faint drumming. To one side of her in the distance, standing out against the flat landscape, Minley saw the silhouette of a man cutting down a lone tree, his axe making a thumping rhythm. As he chopped, the branches of the tree shook. Leaves, blossoms, and seeds flew through the air and dropped into the water like raindrops. Is that the old man of the moon? Minley asked. Him? The rabbit said, following Minley's gaze. Oh no, that's Wu Kang. Why is he cutting down the tree? Minley asked. It seemed a shame to her that the only tree on Never Ending Mountain was being cut down. Questions, questions, the rabbit said. I should make you wait to ask the old man. But if you must know, Wu Kang tries to cut down that tree every night. Every night? Minley couldn't help asking. Yes, the rabbit said. The story of Wu Kang. Most thought Wu Kang was very lucky. His wife was beautiful, and his children were healthy, and they all lived in a comfortable cottage on a farm in the country. His parents and elder brother lived with him, and his neighbors were faithful friends. But Wu Kang always wanted more. So when his crops thrived and flourished, he decided farming was not satisfying enough for him, and the day he reaped his successful harvest, he told his friends that he was leaving the countryside to move to town. Why? they asked him. I want more, Wu Kang said. But we are all so happy here, all together, they said. It is not enough, Wu Kang said. So he packed up his possessions and sold his cottage, farm, and land. Then, with his wife, children, parents, and brother, he moved to town. It was crowded and inconvenient in the smaller house, but Wu Kang was able to apprentice himself to a furniture maker and his family began to adapt to their cramped home. However, the day he was able to carve a chair from Beechwood was the day he quit and decided to move to the city. Why? his parents asked him. I want more, Wu Kang said. But we are happy here together, they said. It is not enough, Wu Kang said. So, with his wife and children walking behind him, Wu Kang left his parents and brother behind and moved to the city to search for something more. Their new home was a small hut of earth squeezed between other tumbled-down houses on a filthy street. 
far away from the tight, cozy house in town or the comfortable cottage on the farm. Nonetheless, his wife and children adjusted to life in the city while Wu Kang looked for satisfaction. But still nothing was enough for him. After mastering the abacus, Wu Kang decided to quit the training to become a storekeeper. After learning how to hold a paintbrush, he stopped studying for a government position. Wu Kang always wanted more. Maybe you should try to become an immortal, his young son said to him. You couldn't want more than that. I think, Wu Kang said, perhaps you are right. So Wu Kang packed up a small bag and left his wife and children to find an immortal to study under. His heartbroken wife pleaded with him as he stepped out the door. Don't leave, she said. Here, we are together. It is not enough, Wu Kang said. Wu Kang searched and traveled long and far, and one night he found the old man of the moon. At last, Wu Kang said, an immortal, master, will you teach me? The old man of the moon preferred to decline, but Wu Kang insisted and begged. So, with misgivings, the old man agreed and brought Wu Kang to Never Ending Mountain. So the old man began to teach Wu Kang lessons full of wonder that common men would marvel at. However, Wu Kang, true to his nature, was unmoved and aspired for more. When the old man showed him how to obtain red threads from his granddaughter, the goddess of weaving, traveling across the sea of stars on a bridge of night birds, Wu Kang watched and followed, but after three days, was discontent. Master, Wu Kang said, there must be something more you can teach me. So the old man taught Wu Kang how to tie the threads of destiny, sealing the knots with a shaft of light from the moon. Wu Kang studied and copied, but after two days, he again grew restless. Master, Wu Kang said, I know you can teach me more. Hence the old man took out the sacred book of fortune and began to teach Wu Kang how to read its text. But after one day, Wu Kang exclaimed, There must be more than this. With that, the old man clapped the book shut. Yes, the old man agreed, there is. And without a word, the old man led Wu Kang to a barren area of never-ending mountain. The old man knocked the ground with his walking stick, and from the rock, a silver tree grew. As Wu Kang stared, the old man tied a string of destiny around him and the tree. The only things for me to teach you, the old man said to Wu Kang as he handed him an axe, are the lessons of contentment and patience. Only when you are able to cut this tree down will I know you have learned them. Wu Kang shrugged and began in earnest to chop down the tree. Little did he realize that with every cut, the tree grew back, and every blow only scattered the seeds from the tree into the night sky lake. So every night, Wu Kang cuts the tree, tied by the string of destiny. He cannot leave it and is fated to chop it until he learns his lesson or until the end of time. Minley walked silently after the rabbit finished the story, and for a while the only sounds were of the tree's flying seeds falling into the water. Those seeds, Minley said to herself, they are really falling through the sky to the earth. They are the seeds that fall onto Moon Rain Village. It's Wu Kang's chopping that makes the strange moon rain. The flowering trees grow from the seeds from the tree on Never Ending Mountain. But just then, Minley's thoughts were interrupted by the rabbit, which had stopped suddenly. In there, the rabbit said, motioning toward a circular opening through a stone wall, is the old man of the moon. <laughs>